an introduction to the simple student microscope. There are no prerequisite skills associated with this module. The objectives of this program are to enable you to, one, describe the characteristics of real and virtual images, two, list the components of the simple student microscope and their functions, three, adjust, use, and maintain an instrument of this kind. The eye is the means by which we receive all visual information. We must understand how it works before we can discuss how the microscope expands our ability to see. The eye consists essentially of a light tight box with a transparent front window called the cornea. Light entering the eye through the opening controlled by the iris is focused by the lens to form an image on the inside surface of the eyeball, the retina. The retina, like a photographic film or digital camera chip, is sensitive to light. Its response is transmitted to the brain through the optic nerve. The eye lens changes its shape so as to form a clear image on the retina. Imagine you're looking at an object, represented here by a red arrow. A clear image is formed when all of the light rays, which originate from a single point, such as the tip of the arrow, pass separately through the eye lens and reunite on the retina. This image is inverted, but the brain interprets the information so that you see the objects the right way up. About the smallest distance between two objects that you can see clearly with the unaided eye is 100 micrometers. Before we discuss how an optical lens can help you to see small objects, let's discuss the two possible kinds of images. A real image is formed by a slide projector. This means that it can be captured on a screen or photographic film or other recording device placed in the path of the light rays. By contrast, a virtual image is what you see when you look in the mirror. The light rays never penetrate the mirror, and so the image can have no physical presence yet it appears to be as far behind the mirror as the object is in front, reversed, and the same size. An enlarged virtual image is formed by a magnifying glass. You can use the magnifying glass to read fine print because the image is not reversed, yet it is not physically present where you perceive it to be, and cannot be captured on a screen or film placed in that position. Let's discuss the path of light rays through a magnifying glass. Rays from the point of the solid red arrow, which represents our object, pass through the lens and come together again at a point to form a real image on the retina. To the brain, it appears that these rays originated not from the actual position of the object, but from a point farther away. At this location, there is an enlarged virtual image, which we represent by dotted lines that indicate that it is virtual. This image is the same way up as the object. In theory, there is no limit to the magnification you can obtain with a simple lens. However, there are some practical limitations to high power magnification with a simple lens, and these include a. Unsteadiness, the difficulty in keeping a magnifying lens and eye in position so as to see a clear image. b. Reduced eye relief, this is the distance between the magnifying lens and the lens of the eye. Because the eye lens is actually several millimeters inside the surface of the eye, the eye lens can obviously not be brought within a certain distance of the magnifying lens. At this location, there is an enlarged virtual image, which we represent by dotted lines that indicate that it is virtual. This image is the same way up as the object. In the microscope, a two-stage magnification process solves these problems because two separate lens systems are involved rather than one as in a simple magnifier. This is called a compound microscope. The eye looks into the eyepiece or ocular, drawn here for simplicity as a single lens. The microscope tube holds the eyepiece in steady alignment with the second optical component, the objective, so-called because it's nearest to the object. Like the eyepiece, the objective is actually a compound system with several lenses. In the first stage of the magnification process, an enlarged, inverted, real image of the object is formed within the microscope tube, approximately one centimeter from the top of the eye tube, in the plane of the eyepiece diaphragm. This is the function of the objective. Again, the object is represented by a solid red arrow, and so is the real image. The eye lens is placed at a position called the eye point, which is a certain characteristic distance above the eyepiece. The eyepiece, like a simple magnifying glass, magnifies the first real image so that the eye sees a further enlarged, inverted, virtual image, which appears to be located about 250 millimeters away. It is conventional to represent a virtual image by dotted lines. The eyepiece and objective, 
mounted together in a tube, form the simplest kind of compound microscope. For practical use, this must be supported by an arm. The arm is usually equipped with a focusing knob, which allows us to adjust the distance between the objective and object. The object itself must be supported on a stage or platform, and the whole instrument stands on a heavy base or foot. Opaque specimens are examined by reflected light. Transparent and semi-transparent specimens are normally viewed by transmitted light. You will probably be working entirely with transmitted light, traveling up from below the stage and continuing into the objective. You may want to examine various materials such as pharmaceuticals, hairs, fibers, or sections of plant and animal tissue. These will normally be mounted on a glass slide in a transparent medium and covered with a thin cover glass so that light can pass directly through them. The slide shown here is potato starch. Let's follow the path of transmitted light rays through a typical student microscope, discussing the function of each component in turn. The transmitted light source is built into the base of the microscope. It will probably have a blue glass filter, which gives the light a daylight quality and is much more comfortable for extended viewing. The condenser is the third optical component of all but the very simplest microscopes and fits below the stage. In the simple student microscope, the condenser may consist of a single lens set in the stage opening or a system of lenses set in a factory preset position. The condenser is part of the substage assembly, so-called because it fits under the stage. A disc diaphragm or iris diaphragm, together with the condenser, make up the entire substage assembly. The diaphragm is used to control the size of the light beam entering the condenser. A disc diaphragm or aperture wheel contains holes of different sizes which can be moved into position. The more common and versatile iris diaphragm opens and closes by sliding a lever or rotating a knurled ring. A small, intense circle of light is formed in the plane of the specimen by the condenser lenses. The function of the condenser is to concentrate the incident beam into a solid cone of light. This solves another problem of the simple magnifying lens, that of obtaining adequate light on the specimen. Light passing through the condenser lenses is concentrated in the plane of the specimen and continues upward and into the objective. You'll recall that the objective produces the first magnified real image of the object and is the most important optical component of the microscope. 